Hello, and welcome once again to LTV's CityScope. This is the show that brings you the who, what, where, when, why, and how of things happening in and around Lemonster, people, places, things, events, all kinds of things happening around Lemonster. Today, we have another one of the LTV friends with us, a longtime friend of LTV. Uh, and I'm going to be talking to him in, in a second. He's an extremely gifted uh, local photographer. And um, his name is Bruce Coulter. Now, Bruce is a disabled Marine Corps veteran. Is that correct, Bruce? Army and Marine Corps. Army I I'm actually retired from the Army. You're retired from the Army. Wow, I'll we'll have to explain how that works, but that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, thank you for your years of service. It's much appreciated. And um, so you transformed what was what, a hobby at one point into? No, I, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, the VA uh, was offering a program for retraining. Okay. And so I signed up for it, and uh, they paid for a year of schooling at uh, Mount Washington Community nice. College. Yep. And uh, I was fortunately under the tutelage of a, of a very good photographer named Bob Mayer. Uh, now he's actually the, uh, I, I guess he's the veterans rep or veteran okay. service officer, if you will. All right. So he, 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 he knows what he's doing. Right, right. So, uh, so it's interesting. So you started in the photography. You just started in you know, practicing and fooling around with it and trying different things. And gradually you developed... Uh, quite a talent, I must say. Oh, As a matter you. of fact, this backdrop you see behind us is, uh, is, is a Bruce Coulter original. This is from uh, quite a few years ago. We had it blown up in three sections here to use as a backdrop, and we figured it would be great um, to utilize today for you since this is one of your that is, shots. That is definitely one of my early shots. I think I took that at about 2 o'clock in the morning. It looks like a time exposure. It looks like it was done, uh, you know, with an open, with the, with the, the uh, shutter open for quite a while to get the, the lighting. Uh, not as long as you would think, but I, it's been so long I can't remember. <laughs> you but. can't remember. <laughs> But anyway, it's, we've used it for many years as a backdrop for the, for the uh, Inside Lemonster show, and we utilize it every once in a while for, for backdrops. As a matter of fact, I might ask Bruce if we can steal another one of his originals oh, as some backdrops. Uh, but anyway, um, so you had some training. You had some education in photography. So you weren't really curious as a child. You weren't, you weren't into photography. I, you know, I picked up a camera actually... Around 1979, 1980, we, right. were, we were on our way to the Indian Ocean. Yep. And I was on a cruise in the military. They, they gave us New Year's in Hong Kong. Okay. So I bought a camera there. That's a great, yeah. And I, I think I had it for all of about six months before. Unfortunately, my late sister took it on a water ride. And Ooh. <laughs> so I never <laughs> really got it. a chance to develop my skills back <laughs> right. in the day. Right. Um, well, it was, it was a great place to buy, to purchase a camera back, back in the day. Um, so, <clears throat> um, you developed your photography over the years, practicing different things. Um, and did you get into a certain area like portraits or landscapes or just anything that looked artistic to I, you? I or? prefer landscapes and architecture. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I've done weddings. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had any complaints, but right. it's... It's a lot of work, and yeah, right. if, if, if you hire a, a uh, photographer to photograph your wedding, you, it's money well spent. Uh, I know they're not cheap, but there's a lot of work that goes, goes into that. It so. really is, and, and you, have to, you have to be on the top of your game if you're a wedding photographer. You really got to be yep. Johnny on the spot. <laughs> and, and it's not a matter of just, I'm here to shoot the wedding. You're there to show up in the morning when the bride's getting ready or the right. groom's getting ready. Right. So it's actually like, it can be as early as, you know, 7 or 8 a.m. and you're there right. until after the, uh, what do they call them? The, uh, the, the dance reception. after, yeah, the reception, yeah. thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> you know, it could be a 16 hour day for you. Right, right. Uh, and then you have to process all those photos. Right, you have And to you can easily uh, take in excess of a thousand photos. Right, right. Today so, you can. In the old yeah. days, you would you would shoot about five rolls of film and hope for the best. But today, uh, you can you can shoot as, as much as you like, uh, which makes editing a little more difficult. Um, so, um, 
So you, you started doing just landscapes and architecture and that type of stuff. Um, and we're gonna, we are going to show some of Bruce's work in a second, but I just wanted to see how you honed your, your craft a little bit, you know, how you, uh, how do you, how did, did you actually learn composition and that type of thing when you were getting training? I, I did. Okay. Um, that's one of the first things they teach you is the, the rule of thirds, how you want to set your, uh, your, your focus on a particular, on a particular item. Right. Um, it's it, it's kind of hard to explain without a right. without a whiteboard. Or, yes. You know, you look back here. <laughs> right. Now this is centered, but typically you want to try to put that off. Yes. To one side, yes. so it's in the third of a photo. But right. in this case, it works. Right. Yep. So, uh, but that's all. That's all I all I was taught in, in about a year. Um, the light didn't really come on until six months into the class. Okay. Um, and that was because. Most of my classmates, well, they were all younger, obviously, right. back then. Right. And they all had four or five or six years of experience with a camera already. Right. So I was fumbling around in the dark, literally. Uh, and then one day the light came on, and I managed so to, to pass the course. That's right, yeah. Well, okay, so let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about uh, landscapes. And so do you scope, you obviously scope out a location, A, number one, probably. You scope out a location. Do you also go back and visit that different times of day? I do. Different times of the year to figure out where the light is and where the sun is and things like that? Um, you should scope out where you're going. I don't typically. I'm the type that will get in the car and go. Right. Um, I have gone, I have driven two and a half miles, or two and a half hours to take 10 photos. Okay. Yep. And then, because I got what I wanted. Right. I knew when I looked through the camera, I had the shots that I wanted. Right. And that was enough for me. I drove, that was all, I drove all the way up to uh, Reading, Vermont, right. uh, looking for Gen Farm, which is apparently one of the most photographed uh, farms or barns right. uh, in New England, if, if not the U.S. So how much, I guess what I'm getting at is, how much actual like, homework do you do before you set out to, to scout a location or something. You just go and look I, around. I, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I look around where, I, and you should typically, most professional photographers will tell you, go go in advance, look around, right. look to see what you're trying to do. Right. Um, I, I just never have. I, I, I fly by the seat of my pants, if you yeah. will, and when I get there, I'll, I'll look around, uh, yeah. but I don't you know, do what for days in advance because you know, obviously I'm, I live in Massachusetts where right. I go is right. a couple hours away. But I will take as many shots as I think I need to get the one that I like. Right. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the other ones that, I, that I've taken. Right. Uh, but when I see a favorite, I, I just know it automatically. That's the one that I want. Right. Okay. Yep. So, um, so that's interesting because I know there's some photographers out there that um, what they'll do is they'll scope out a location and, and repeatedly visit that different times of the day different seasons uh, they absolutely to scope do. out where things are. Um, um, one of my favorite places to go is yep. uh, uh, Noble Lighthouse in Maine. Right. That's one of uh, those photographed lighthouses. Yeah. The I've world. been there, you know, I've left the house at three in the morning and right. got there for sunrise. Right. Uh, I've been there in the middle in the middle of the day and I've been there for evening for right. sunsets. Right. Um, and now it's to the point where I, I just go because I want to try to find a different angle. Yes. Yep. You know, sometimes I'm uh, I don't know how many, if you're familiar with Double Lighthouse. Yes, but, I am. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can just stay in the parking lot and, right. you know, just move toward the grass a little bit. A lot of times I'll go down in the rocks. Right, right. Uh, which I don't really suggest a lot of people do <laughs> right. because some of those <laughs> rocks tricky. are slimy and <laughs> right. if you're not careful, you will take a yeah. tumble. Yep. Uh, but I've gotten some of my best shots there yep. that I really enjoy. Well, we're going to start looking at some of your work because... It's absolutely amazing to me. Uh, your composition is, is fantastic, your exposures. Um, so let's start, uh, Keith, why don't we uh, start looking at some of, uh, some of Bruce's work here and uh, let's bring up, uh, now you also do some, some, some close up and macro photography yes, too, do. which is um, you know, using a specialized lens to really get in close, yep. correct? So this is um, pretty obvious what it is, but basically, you know, you're blurring the background in this one so that the B really stands out, uh, depending on, you, you, so you, I'm assuming you're using a telephoto or, no, I'm or using, a macro I, lens? No, I use a macro lens. Okay. Uh, this one I think I shot at the Bridge of Flowers out in Shelburne Falls. Okay, all right. Um, and 
I will get as close as the bee will allow me to anyway. <laughs> right. I, they've never bothered me. I, I'm, I'm not allergic, so right. that, that's never been a concern. But, you know, I, I see some photographers. And one thing you'll learn as a photographer is, is patience. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I will stay on that bee for as long as I can to get the best shot. Right. I have yet to be able to get right up close where you've got where you can see the pupils that well. Right, right. Uh, I don't know how, how they do that, but they no. do a very fine job yeah. with it. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of them, and it's kind of hard to do it, but some people, some photographers will use a tripod. Right. And I, I, I don't get that because that bee's not posing for you. Right, right, exactly. So I will follow it from bush to bush. Or well, that was one of the other questions flower. I was going to ask you is do you always use a tripod or it depends on the situation? I, I, I go handheld with macro photography. Okay, but for the landscapes? Most yes, of the time, landscapes. No, landscapes, actually, I do a lot of them handheld. Do you? But yeah. I will, if I want to get a, a longer exposure, right, obviously right. I'll use my it's tripod. tripod. Uh, let's see another. Let's uh, keep going through those, Keith. Uh, you can tell us where, where the location is. That is in Bolton. I believe it's Bolton Flats, actually. Okay, right. Yep. Um, I was out in the morning looking to take a photograph. I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. Like I said, i just get in the car and go. And I, I, I drove past this, and I said, wait, I need to turn around. Right. And I did just that, parked my car, and went across the street. And uh, It was just the perfect... It was just right. the perfect angle for me to, right. to get that shot. You get the road going down, the sunset, right. leading, actually the road's leading to the sun, or sunrise rather, so uh, I, I just, I just cool. knew that's the shot I wanted. All right, Keith, go to the, go to the next. Here's a, a nice winter scene. That uh, I took on New Year's Day, I want to say 2020. Yep. Uh, maybe a little bit earlier. It was before COVID kicked in. Right. Uh, and that was out in Western Mass. So basically it was snowing. You said, might be good to get some shots. Yeah, so, I, I know, pulled off the highway again. My daughter is my, daughter is my companion. Yep. Uh, especially uh, she doesn't have her license because right. she doesn't really like to drive. Right. Or, yep. uh, but it's given us a chance to get closer. So I, I like having her company That's with nice. me. Yeah. And uh, we'll look around. And I, again, I just yanked off the road and I said, this, I know what I want, and, this, right. and that's what I, and that's what now, I ended up with. You, you talked about the, the rule of thirds, and, and so you off-centered that tree just a little bit off-center, yep. just to give it more, you know, composition type yep. of stuff, which is very good. Uh, keep going, Keith. These are, these are getting uh, really good here. <clears throat> okay. Now, that's, uh, where was this? That uh, was uh, in Chatham on okay. Cape Cod, uh, and that was, uh, again, a spur-of-the-moment stop. Right. Uh, and I just... Crawled down, crawled down off the road a little bit, and I said, it, it just, it, it looked good to me. It didn't look good as, uh, I get my vertical and horizontal backwards. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it just looked that, you know, I'll take one in each direction. Right. And I knew when I, when I saw that and that one, uh, that's vertical, right? I still got it mixed up, believe it or not. <laughs> so when you shoot this, uh, do you normally shoot all color? Well, you, obviously, it's a digital camera. So, and then you say, this might look cool if I, if I you know, uh, make it monochrome. So when when I'm processing, <laughs> yep. I'll look and I'll, I'll, there, there's a, I use Lightroom. Yes. Yep. Uh, and you have an option to just click on black and white. Yes. Yeah. And I'll look at that. And sometimes I, I look at it in color and, and just know it'll look better right, in black right. and white. Yep. Uh, but usually, when I when I have the option of rocking back and forth between the two, that's that's yeah. when I know that's the one. It's very nice. Black shot. and white is perfect. All right, Keith. Let's have another another uh, seaside yeah. area. Again, Cape Cod. Cape Cod. In okay. Chatham. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that is a. Uh, it's two photos stitched together. Is it really? Yeah. Nice job. You can't you can't tell what that is. And uh, <clears throat> you know, I've cr I cropped it a little bit. Right. Uh, but you know, you've got that solitary boat right in the middle. Yeah. You know, and then you've just got the perfect backdrop yeah. for it. Yeah, you do. And it's like, you know, who left the who left the boat here? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Keith. Let's see another. Oh, there's a nice sun, sunset there. Or is that a yeah? I'm assuming that it's a was sun. Uh, again, Chad. My my. Yeah. I, I go there a lot in the summer. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is it? Coast Guard Lighthouse, I believe. Uh, yeah, uh, and that's where I got it. I don't know why that looks off center, but it looks a little tilted, or maybe uh, it's just me. But it could. Uh, who knows? I didn't really, you know, alter any of your photos. No, so. no, no. I, I just, <laughs> yeah. you know, what it is is the grass in yes. front. Yep, yep. Because I did take everything at an angle, and I didn't see anything that would have looked good, right, vertical or horizontal. So I just turned it into a square. 
And uh, let's go back to that uh, macro shot of those flowers there. You teased us with that, Keith. That is, now that looks like you set, that was set up with, with lighting. Yeah. Was it? Okay. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> uh, I took a class online. Nice. Uh, lighting. Yeah. To uh, learn how to use basically a flash. Okay. Yep. Uh, a strobe lights actually. Right. I had, you know, a strobe light here and a strobe yeah, light a on the other side. Then a, then a, yeah. Yep. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> I probably took about 20 shots of those wow, two flowers. That's nice. Uh, and then I decided it would look best just to have the uh, the petals themselves. Right. That was actually sitting in a uh, water bottle. Wow. And, yeah. uh, you know, just sticking out, and I yeah. just removed the water that's bottle nice. and the stems. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, people watching this uh, will give you some opportunity at the end to see where you can possibly get... Uh, I think do you have an Etsy store. Yeah. Okay, we'll go over that in a bit. Where if you're interested in any of Bruce's prints, you know we could we could we could point you in the right direction. We're not going to tell you what to I do, but we'll that. point you in the right direction. <laughs> All right, what else you got there, Keith? Uh, this is a nice. That's uh, Zones Falls. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Athol, I believe. Yeah. Um, I got my feet a little wet <laughs> climbing <laughs> yeah. down to get that. And you know, I'm 63 years old. It ain't getting any easier. Right, yeah, you have to be more careful too now. But uh, you know what, I, 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 it's just something I'm used yeah. to, you know, from the military, obviously. But for so. people just getting into photography, I mean, those, that's, that's a time exposure of the water flowing over Yeah, the, that's the only falls. about a, that's maybe a, a five second exposure if okay. that long. I yeah. think that might even be long. Because yeah. the problem when you're doing with that, you know, it's one thing if you're doing it in the open ocean and there's nothing behind you. Right. And actually, even if there is something behind you in a log exposure, it disappears. Yes. Yep. But here the problem when you do that is if it's windy out, you're going to get blur from all the leaves, the branches oh, yes. blowing yeah, around. That's right. So right. If, you yeah. can do a long exposure, but you better uh, you make sure you're going to have a, a right. pretty calm day to do it. Right. All right. Let's, uh, well, that's an interesting shot. That is at... The Doyle property. Okay. I'm amazed uh, you can You remember. go along the boardwalk. <laughs> right. It's just a mishmash of branches and leaves, and I just liked it. Right. And uh, the way the sun was filtering. Yeah, so I shot, it in, uh, I shot it in color, and then I also turned it in black. Yeah. Black and white looks good, but in this case, the color yeah. just made it really yeah. stand out. All right, Keith. There's another close-up. That's, that, that's a nice shot. Yeah, I, I took that from the... Uh, I live in a second-floor apartment. I took that from my window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because when a leaf lands on your windowsill, you take a picture. Of it. There you go. <laughs> uh, you know, I just cracked open the the window and uh, brought it, took out my macro. That's nice. And, uh, yeah. That is literally that's I didn't add to the sun to the to light. Oh, yeah, that was the literally the sunlight. Light. Nice. Uh, nice. And all I did was darken the uh, right. the background a little right. bit. That's good. To yeah. really make that leaf stand out. All right, Keith. Uh, that's another dock side. Yeah, yeah, it's up in Maine. Um, mm -hmm. A oh, that looks like Perkins. Uh, yeah, it Perkins? is Perkins okay. Cove. Yeah, yeah. Does and, look like, uh, yeah. I, I just like all the boats being a little bit askew. Right, right, yeah. Matter of fact, I submitted that one to uh, not Shutterstock, uh, Adobe. Uh, okay. Adobe stock. Yeah, yeah. And they rejected it because the boats were all askew. I'm like, really? <laughs> they know composition. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, next one, Keith. Ooh, now this. That's Relatively recent. That was okay. uh, from the top of uh, Mount Monadnock. That's Monadnock. Uh, you're on top of Mount Monadnock, yep. looking, Just uh, looking over. northeast, maybe. And, but yeah, I don't know, because you can see way in the distance the the other mountains. Yeah, it was the first time I'd been up there. Yeah, Monadnock's not an easy climb. No, <laughs> especially with camera gear. You know, going over the rocks and stuff. I have everything. I have a solid. I have a very solid. Uh, Walking stuff. tripod. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I have a backpack, right. and I just throw everything in my backpack and and head on up. That's nice. All right, Keith. What else you got? Oh, that looks like is that, that from Mount Washington. Oh, you're up on Mount Washington. Okay. I, I did not walk up that. Yes, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I did it a few times in my youth, but I would never attempt it now. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? It's a scary ride up and up and back. Oh yeah. Oh, really, yeah. it's a, it's a it's a it's a white knuckle drive. And ninety five percent of the time, when you're on top of Mount Washington after hiking and you want to get a good shot, the weather socks in and there's nothing good. When up I there. first got there, <clears throat> fog, you, yes. you couldn't see anything. Right. 
In about a half an hour, everything just lifted. Sometimes if you wait, it, the weather changes instantly up on, on Mount Washington. So, yeah, sometimes if you wait, you'll, you'll get some more. Uh, you got some more there, Keith? Oh, okay. This is the one I was waiting to see. This is Nubble, obviously. Yeah, obviously that was a long exposure. Okay. Um, I got that, that at the blue hour. beautiful. Okay, that's um, right when the sun is... Yeah, and the water is nice and flat because I had, I believe it was a 30-second exposure. Okay. Uh, so when you have waves, right. you know, when you shoot a long exposure, everything just flattens out. The water yes. will just flatten out. And it gives you that little reflection of the, the lighthouse itself that's in the water in front of it. So uh, what time did you get up there to, to shoot this? I got up there around 5.30 in the morning. Okay. So, you know, I left the house around 2.30 right, or 3. Right, right. Um, and um, I, I took a couple of shots. I think I might have given you two shots of this. There's yeah, one did. that's Is a blow hour. One? Is there, there yeah, and that's yeah. one's that one's about uh, 45 minutes later. Wow. And it's just what? a it's not a it's but not a long exposure. Though. Look yeah. at the difference between those two, taken in that short span of time, and how different it makes the lighthouse look. Now this lighthouse is the most famous photograph lighthouse in the world, and we've seen. A lot of photographers shoot some unbelievable stuff, of, of, you know, of, of this. But you're right up there, Bruce. I mean, no, some of these you. look really good. Uh, the colors are phenomenal. Uh, it looks it looks really nice. And, you know, when I was set up to take that shot, yep. I wanted to. I purposely set it up where I had the sun just peeking out behind the lighthouse. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then I had a uh, my ISO was I think set around. Uh, Fourteen or fifteen. Okay. Uh, so I'd get that star effect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's another question I was going to ask you. Do you uh, sometimes it's called bracketing for those who don't. Know, I do. I you, do. You and I think actually I think I'm pretty. I think I bracketed that one. Uh, I again I don't remember, but uh, I, I will use uh, bracket photos. Right. Um, Bracketing is, is when it takes multiple shots, but it'll take one a little bit underexposed and one a little bit overexposed. And, so and one at just the right one exposure. One just the right exposure. And you can, you can bracket, uh, you know, the newer cameras, you can bracket, I guess, take five or seven photos, maybe okay. more, I'm not right. sure, to, to get the photo, to yes. get the layers. Right. I'll usually go with three. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take the shot. And take if, the it, if it works out, I'll know it when I get back and right. get it up in the light room, and if, if it doesn't work out, it, right. you know, no one will ever see it. All right, Keith. Oh, this is, this is a nice, that's a nice shot. And, mm -hmm. and I love the black and white here. That Monocle. was, yeah, that's uh, Province Town. Now, that's no filter, correct? I no, mean, there's, there's no, no filter, filter there. No, it's just black and white. Uh, and I, you know, again, it's one of those things where I looked at it in color, I looked at it in black and white, and black and white was the better choice. And in Lightroom, you can adjust the contrast and the, a little bit, you know, you can. Uh, like so it looks more like an Ansel Adams type of, of photograph. Uh, this this looks really uh, you know really typically nice. when I when I when I shoot a photo. Right. Now, I'm I'm not above looking at some of the pros on YouTube. I, right. I will follow them in a heartbeat to right. get it. Um, but the first, and a lot of them say, well, you know, first I'll take this down. They work it manually. Yes. I always click on auto. Okay. And then I take it from there. Okay. And then I work, decide on what's best. I'll, uh, I'll check see. the white point, the black yeah. points, and uh, so I get just the right, right. exposure there. And um, I will usually turn down, turn up the shadows. I, I, I try to keep stuff out of the shadows unless okay. I think it works. Like obviously this, it works with shadows. Now, have you? Uh, Ever experimented with, uh, what do they call it, HDR photography? I have. Okay. Um, it, it was a, a, a lot of people like it. Uh, right. To me, it was a, a little bit of a fad for about three minutes, and <laughs> I said, okay, I'm over it. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I've done a little bit of it with HDR, and it's fun to do. Um, but a lot of that you can do right in post. I mean, when, you, when you're using Lightroom, you can, you can do that anyway. Yeah, you know it's just a matter of actually going with uh, a little bit of the exposure and your contrast. And exactly. you can pretty much set your, right. you know, get HDR if that's what you're looking right, for. Right. Or, HD, or um, well, Lightroom will also process it for HDR. Right. And then you've got software that works specifically to you create. Do, yeah. HDR. Photos. Sometimes it does some amazing things. It the, does. The detail 
you can get out of a photo is is insane. But sometimes you but, go a little too far, yes. and you know before you know it, you've got some some uh, vignetting that shouldn't right. be there. Or, or, artifacting or some yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else you got, Keith? Are we uh, getting near? Okay, well, that's another nice monochrome shot. Yep. Yeah. Again, problems down theater. Yeah. I, I don't know why it's sitting in sand in the back, oh, right in front of the beach. <laughs> But Maybe that's it's, where it was. it's a display, an artistic display or something. Oh, so, you know, I had to crop that and move around to get the right angle that I was looking for. And How are we doing for time, Al? Five minutes? Okay. So um, let's come back to us. Um, so do you do uh, any art exhibits at all with, with your photography? No, I haven't. You haven't? No, no. well, actually, I, I put some stuff on display at the uh, Lemus Art Gallery before it okay. shut down, Right. Yep. sadly. Okay. but. Yep. It is what it is. Okay. But uh, beyond that, I haven't. Uh, I just okay. Okay. show it off on Facebook, right. Instagram. Uh, you do some, some fantastic work. And I know uh, you were a journalist for a while, and you also did journalistic photography, yep. right, for a while. Um, so uh, do you uh, do things by request? Will people call you and say, hey, can you get a shot of this? Or do you do uh, that? Or? For that sort of thing, not often. Right. Um, you know, if someone wants me to do uh, some candid family photos okay. yeah. or, or they're having a, a Christmas party and they want right. somebody to take pictures, then okay. I'll show up and do that. But Very as far good. as landscapes, I generally just, I'm, I'm on my own. Right. And, you know, I had one gentleman years ago who complained that uh, I didn't take pictures of the copper roof on the fire department right. and instead I shot something else. Yep. And, and he just didn't understand that. Right because I wanted to do it. Right, if right. you want me to take a picture, you can tell me, me what you want. Yeah. But he didn't want to pay me, so. <laughs> yeah, you can't please you can't please everyone when you when you're a photographer. It's very difficult to, to please everybody. But where can people find you? So you do have uh, your work on an Etsy site. Um, uh, how can people find you there? Uh, you just <laughs> go to Etsy and type in New England Wonders. It's all one word. Okay. Um, and they're all instant downloads. You can, you know, it's a seven dollar photo. Right. You can download the high res photo. You can, you know, take it to CVS or right. Walgreens, print it out wherever you want. Right. Uh, I wouldn't suggest taking it there, but I understand people. They just want the the photo. They just want the photo. Exactly. So Depending why not? It's relatively inexpensive. It. Um, I've I've done some of my photos. I've I've blown up, and I've never used. You know, I always go to a, a professional print yep. company. But you pay, you know, you're going to pay extra for that. So. Yeah, I use Miller's Imaging. Uh, yeah. They're out in, uh, you know, I don't know. I think so people do ask you to, to supply them with the print itself. Sometimes you sell some that way. Yeah, you, uh, you know, sometimes Etsy's, it's a hit or a miss. I yes. mean, yep. uh, I'm, I'm not a social media genius, unfortunately. Right. Right. Uh, but I keep trying and Let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, Bruce, you know, I want to thank you for, for coming in. You've been trying to do this for years to get Bruce on here. We finally got him on here to talk about his work. Uh, keep going. I can't wait to see what, what you come up with next and oh, what, what the future you having holds. Me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> winter's here. It's, I have a hard time shooting in winter. Yeah, because yeah. It's, and then when you start getting into spring, it's mud and dirty right. snow. Right. But, so the macro gives me a little bit chance to go a little bit, look at something differently. Yeah, so. That's cool. Very good. That's what well, I try. Again, good work, and thank you for being on CityScope. Yeah. Again, thanks for having and me. And I want to thank you people in the viewing audience for watching, and stay tuned. We're, there's always a CityScope in your future. And remember, folks, that time waits for no one, so you got to do it now. Thank you.